Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic and welcome to another magic mail day. And today, again, it's kind of a special one because after my video about my legends collection, my legendary creature collection, I should say, there are 55 of those creatures in legends and I've got about, how many did I have? Like 45 or something. Anyway, I still need quite a bunch. I showed a little overview. I can show it here again of the legendary creatures that I'm still looking for. And as I said in that video, it is one of those slow pacing collecting goals. You know, it's not something that I wanna do quickly. I don't wanna buy everything. I wanna maybe trade a little bit. You know, when I'm at a tournament, I'm going through somebody's binder, if they have the card, et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes buy something like it two weeks ago. Uh, but this is the cool thing about old school. I get this message from Daniel, who's an old school player from Denmark. He's like, I got a couple of the cards you still need and I just wanna send them to you. And I'm saying, okay, you know, Daniel's super cool. Are you looking for any cards? Can we make a trade? And obviously the only cards that I had weren't close to the value as the cards that he he has now sent to me, I believe. But um, I believe you looked for Fisher for some reason. And I, I found out I had nine Fisher from the dark, which is a pretty useful card, I guess. Um, and I emailed a play set to you, but that's not even close to the value of what's in here. So again, thank you very much, uh, Daniel, you know, just for sending it my way. I really, really appreciate it. Um, here we can see the Elder Dragons, right? Um, let's open it up and let's see what cards I can add to my collection and how that collection is actually developing. Look, 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 we see some Danish newspaper, I assume. There we go. I wonder, by the way, Daniel, let me know in the comments if you if you got my package yet. It's so random how the post goes. Sometimes it takes a week, sometimes it takes forever. Anyway, look at that old newspaper, which is great. I can read all about the Danish news. I love that stuff. Um, oh, and look, North Star Brewed Brewers, North Star Brewers. And then, oh, that's a sweet looking token. One of the cards I believe in here is going to be a Stang. So he accompanied it with a Stang token. Thank you so much. And I have to say, Daniel, at first when you sent me the message, I assumed that the cards, let me just get a scissors. Uh, the cards you were talking about were actually Italian, but I believe they're, they're English. Let's see, where can we, where's the sellotape? Here's the sellotape. Okay, there we go. Now we have an opening. Look, there's the first Legends card. So it's Kai Takahashi. Wow, man. It's still, it's so cool, Daniel, that you just sent these cards my way. Fantastic. Let me get this token out because I also love the token. Let's have a little look at the token, shall we? That is cool. Stang twin. I'm going to use it next to my Stang. I promise you that. And look at the sleeve. Really sweet North Star Brewers. Really sweet. Um, let's have a look. What else do we have? We already saw the Takanashi. Maybe start with that one. Get it out here. So it's, of course, a legendary creature. Let's have a look. Oh, it's one of those inner sleeves that has like this tucked in it. You always have to be careful because sometimes you want to like push it out straight away. And when you feel a little bit of resistance, you got to stop right away. I mean, you don't want to damage the card, obviously, because then it's usually one of these sleeves or it opens from the side instead of from the bottom. So here we go. Kai Takahashi. So one green, one white and two for the summon legends. And you can tap it to prevent up to two damage to one target creature. It is a two, two. At least you don't have to pay cost for the prevention, you know? So once it's, you know, once it's on a battlefield, I guess it could be pretty good, especially in a creature heavy deck. And obviously when I'm talking about these creatures, I'm talking about them like in an old school EDH setting, right? I'm not talking about a 1v1 play. Okay, so this is the Lady of the Mountain, which is a vanilla. And look at the state, the cards are in a pretty good state, actually. Look at that. 
Again, something I wasn't expecting, actually, Daniel. I thought you're probably just going to send me over some plate copies, which is fantastic, but these are in better condition than I thought they would. So The Lady of the Mountain, Beautiful Art by Richard Kane Ferguson. So this one is one red, one green, and four for a 5.5. Five. So, you know, a crawl worm is a 6.4. You can kill it with a side blast. This one is a 5.5. Five. You cannot kill it with a side blast. I mean, it could be nice to play, like in a deck where you also play Urnum. Maybe you can play Jasmine in there as well. Would be nice. Anyway, the Lady of the Mountain, beautiful card. Another one added to my collection. And let me just have a quick look. Ah, we got two beautiful other cards here as well. We have, yeah, this is so sweet. This is a card that I think is really, really cool. Let me just, I'm gonna try to get it out of the sleeve in one piece. Yeah, this card is really cool because it kind of has this giant growth effect on a stick. Let me just zoom in properly. So this is Tuknir Deathlock. The art, I mean, look at that art. It's so cool, it's like so fairy tale like Absolutely love it. Two red and two green. I mean, what's on top of her head? It looks like a dragon or some kind of lizard bone. Very, very cool. So it's a summon legend, obviously. It's flying. It's a 2-2 two -two flyer for four with a pretty good ability. You can pay one red and one green and tap it and target creature gains plus two, plus two until end of turn. So it's kind of that giant growth effect on the stick, what I talked about. So pretty good in attack with, uh, in, a, in, a, in a deck with Berserks, for example. I like this card. Again, a card you never see when you go to an old school Magic tournament. There are hardly any decks that play this. So I'm, that's for me, it's one of the reasons to play this because I know it's costly. You know, you need double red, you need double green. It's four, four, two, two flyer, but its ability actually is pretty good. And, you know, when you play this, it comes as a surprise to your opponent. I love it when you play out a card and your opponent goes, can I have a look at that? What does it do? You know, and it's reading the card. I love that. You know, despite the fact that, you know, the 93, 94 card pool hasn't changed in ages, you still have cards like this that you can play and people look at you like, where's this card coming from? Anyway, beautiful, beautiful card. And also, this is a card, I believe, that has some serious value as well. Um, and then another one here, the Stang. So we already saw the token. This is the creature that goes with the token. I mean, Daniel, I just, I got no words, man. I got no words. You're just sending these over to me. That's just so kind of you. Absolutely so kind. Because these are... These are legends that are in good condition. Some are playable, some not so much, but they're good, they're beautiful, they're easy to trade, they're easy to sell, but you chose to do neither of those things. You chose to send them over to me, and I I really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you so much. And I also love the token. I'm definitely gonna play the token next to the Stang. Oh, I haven't even discussed the Stang yet. You probably know what it does, but let's just go over it anyways. It's, again, it's a pretty useful creature that you don't see often. Um, one green, one red, and four for this summon legend, which is a three, four creature. So three, four for six is not that good, but wait, it does something cool. When Stang is brought into play, also put a Stang twin token into play. So we got the token. Um, Stang twin token is a three, four green and red legend. So it's a twin of Stang. And if Stang leaves to play, remove Stang twin token from the game. If the Stang twin token leaves play, bury Stang, right? So they're linked together, right? It would be so cool to kind of combine this in some kind of, you know, boomerang effect deck where you also add uh, Dance of Many and you just try to have as many Stank Twins around as you possibly can. That would be really funny. That'd be really cool. Or a deck dedicated, or um, dedicated is not the right word, but a deck with a theme around Crawl Worm where you say, I'm going to play all the other creatures that have a casting cost of six. That'd be pretty funny as well. Anyway, I got a lot of ideas here, but... Um, First and foremost, I'd like to thank you, Daniel, for sending this over. And I would also like to thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time.
Bumba Kajik! <laughs> 